Well, this is Dr. Stan back here at Radio Liberty, coming to you from the hills overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay and, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story, hoping to convince you that reality is usually scoffed at, that illusion is usually king. But in the battle for the survival of Christian civilization, it's going to be reality, not illusion or delusion, that will determine what the future will bring. And I need to remind you the views expressed here are not necessarily those of the owners, management, staff, sponsors, or supporters of the station you're listening to. They happen to be my views. And hopefully... For the next hour, they're going to be the views of Michael Shaw, and Michael certainly is a, a, a gentleman who's been involved in this battle for, oh, 15 to 20 years now, trying to bring out the fact that Agenda 21 is a secret agenda to destroy the infrastructure of our society and impose a fascist society on not only the United States, but the entire world. Agenda 21 is the a secret agenda for the 21st century, and is being coordinated by a group of very wealthy and powerful people whose loyalty is not to America, but to this idea that a small group of people should rule the world. And these people are in positions of power. They want to drastically reduce the population. They want to get us out of our bicycles. They want to get us certainly out of our cars. They want to get us, pardon me, they want to get us out of bicycles, get us out of our cars. They want to get us out of our homes and into small little apartments where they can watch us and monitor us and control everything that they do, at least those who are allowed to live. And people say, that sounds crazy. Well, of course, it may sound crazy. But unfortunately, these programs are underway today. And those of you who have read my uh, talks uh, on, uh, or read my treatise on population control, you can find it on the Internet. It's called uh, the Population Control Reduction, uh, Population Reduction, uh, monogra- population, uh, let's see, uh, reduction, a uh, monograph, Population Reduction. Just look up my name in Population Reduction. You'll be able to find it. And then, of course, we also hope that you'll get the uh, DVD that we put together, Population Control, the Secret Agenda, and I think you'll find it fascinating. And we actually have a a syllabus that goes with that, which contains the um, treatise of my writings on population control. And basically, there really are people out there who have already supervised the murder of billions of people, and we're talking about through abortion and euthanasia and wars and revolutions, and they're all senseless. Most of these wars and revolutions make very little sense, unless you understand there's a genocidal force working behind the scenes. Well, right now we have Michael Shaw on the program. Hi, Michael. How are we doing? Well, I'm just fine, Dr. Stan. How are you? And it's nice to be on your show again. Well, it's great. You just picked up the story about Agenda 21 and what's really going on. Well, I, I think I like to, you know, I, I think most of the audience has some familiarity with Agenda 21, and so what I want to do is, is, is give some of the the core elements of how Agenda 21 is affected in your community, because every county in America has its Agenda 21 program, and of course that comes by result of now 21 years of Agenda 21 protocol, um, after 21 years after the Agenda 21 protocol was fully infused into the federal government. George Bush signed the Rio Accords in 1992, which was a uh, which included Agenda 21, was a so-called soft law policy that didn't require any treaty approval because it wasn't a binding treaty. So 178 nations agreed to the Agenda 21 protocol, and each of them went back to their home countries after signing and began the implementation. Of course, the globalist objective is to conquer America. And when George Bush signed that agreement, America essentially um, succumbed to the idea of world government, and uh, Bush brought that home, and Clinton immediately the next year began the full implementation of Agenda 21 through every federal agency. And today, that program is in every county across the United States. Hold that thought, hold the thought. We'll be back in a moment with Michael Shaw right here at Radio Liberty. Michael, you go right ahead. 
Well, once that happened, once every federal agency was imbued with the primary purpose of the implementation of Agenda 21, things in America began to change. I mean, we can all look back to, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, and things were a lot different. Of course, people then would have said that 20 or 30 years earlier than that, in 1950s and 60s, were a lot different than it was in the early 90s. But what Agenda 21 has done is that it has accelerated that process of transformation, transformation into a world government situation where human beings are considered chattel, where religion and religious ideas are to be negated. You know, world religion is to take the place of uh, contemporary religious uh, ideas. And so it's not surprising when you look across the scene in America today and you see that our schools are turning out global citizens, um, you know, most high school or college graduates today have no real idea of the nature of the American experiment, have no idea of the history of the American experience. Instead, they aspire to be global citizens. And as a consequence, the balance of the prospects for Amer the American future are very dim, very dim indeed. Because the globalists have always said the baby boomers can be used in one of two ways. They can either join the globalist effort, and many, of course, have. It's the baby boomers who lead this dynamic. Or they can simply be ignored and forgotten and overrun, have their children taken and trained through the school system. And that's today what our school system does. It trains our children to become active advocates for global governance. And so we don't have a crop of people rising in this society, and growing up in this society, with a commitment to the American ideals, nor do they have a commitment to religious concepts. Instead, they're chasing their place. They're the limited places available for those who are going to lead this transformation, this, the final steps in the transformation of America having gone from a free and independent sovereign nation to America, an outpost of the globalist order. You say, well, that can't really happen. What goes on in D.C. doesn't affect me. I, I live in my suburban neighborhood, and my life goes on, and sure, I, I can see some, some things happening in my state or happening in my county or even in my city that are a bit disturbing, but, gee, I'm not going to attribute it to the globalist move. Well, that's hold, that thought, hold that thought, Michael. We'll be back here in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and Michael is simply pointing out that there, this is a globalist plan to alter the structure of our society, to alter the structure of the world. And most people say they want to lead their lives and just be left alone. They don't understand that they don't have that option. And most people say, well, you know, we don't really care about what's going on in Washington, D.C. Just leave us alone and we'll be happy here at home. But they're not doing that, ladies and gentlemen. America is changing as part of a coordinated plan to centralize all power with government and gradually little by little to erode our freedom and to force us certainly to uh, do exactly what the leaders want and increasingly why of course we're having a more autocratic local government and government is being forced to go along with federal dictates or they cut off federal funding and of course federal local communities don't have the money so they have to go along with the federal mandate and little by little step by step, gradually centralizing ever more power with a nameless bureaucracy that eventually will control you and everything in your, everyone in your family from the cradle to the grave. And that grave may come much, much sooner than you really want because they're poisoning our food and they're poisoning our air and they're poisoning certainly the, the water we drink. They know exactly what they're doing. Very, very few people have any grasp of it. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, picking up on the concepts that you, you, you ended there with, Dr. Stan, the, um, the, one of the, the three documents that guide the Agenda 21 dynamic is called the Global Biodiversity Assessment Report. Now, this comes out from the United Nations. It's part of the implementation program for the Agenda 21 um, uh, dynamic. And in that document, it actually says that human population, if we are to remain industrialized, that is not to all be turned into peasants, 
if there's any industrialization left in the world, the population is to be reduced by 85%. So it is a eugenics program that uh, isn't bound by social or racial connotation. It is simply an anti-human program, one that is fully adopted by the American government. It doesn't matter who's elected president, because the Democrat Party and the Republican Party are fully on board. Now, some people may say, oh, but the Republican National Committee issued a proclamation against Agenda 21. Well, sure they did, because the word is out, and the, 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 the understanding of Agenda 21 is growing. And so the good people in the Republican Party demanded this happen. And the leaders of the Republican Party said, okay, we'll pacify them, we'll pass this, this, this uh, dynamic, but I guarantee you the next time a Republican is in the White House, he'll be just as committed as George Bush Sr. and George Bush Jr. And all of the Republican candidates since then have been to the globalist program of Agenda 21. And uh, of course the Democrats are as well. And basically the Global Biodiversity Report, I have a copy of it, if Michael has a copy of it, you probably can still get a copy. The Global Biodiversity Report is over 1,100 pages, but it really does talk about the necessity of markedly limiting the population of the world. This program is already underway. That, of course, is what abortion and euthanasia is all about. That's why, of course, in genetically modified foods have been outlawed, certainly throughout Europe. And here in the United States, you're not even allowed to know that you're eating genetically modified food. Many of the food substances and coloring and odors we have here are outlawed throughout the world. Why? Because they destroy the health of carcinogenic. They certainly suppress reproduction and fertility. They know exactly what they're doing. And you're not allowed even to read or to know about that here in the United States. There is a population control agenda program. Population control agenda program. Go up on the Internet, simply type in population control agenda. Stan Monteith or Radio Liberty, read it and weep. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, the question that, a, that ought to jump out in most people's minds today still is, you know, I can still see that the the regular person is going to say, all right, our, 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 I'm willing to accept that our national government is misplaced. But that's not really affecting me other than the high taxes I pay and the heavy burden of regulatory authority that I'm subjected to. That doesn't really affect me in my day-to-day -day life. You know, I know Sam Smith, our city councilman, he wouldn't be for any of this stuff. Well, we now need to, you know, to... to to rid ourselves of that notion. I'm going to give information that I, that I think will help people understand why the threat is down at City Hall. Because the American government has already been transformed in a way that is not recognizable nor understood by the American people. We already live in a Sovietized regional system of government. Now, what do I mean by Sovietized? and regional system of government. Well, a Soviet system is one that works through a, a cadre of councils. And these councils all take directives from on high. And so if you've got a high council with a series of, of intermediate subsidiary councils all working to the same objective, all understanding the, uh, the, the, the goal of, of the Soviet leaders, you have then in place the kind of government that ruled the, the Soviet Union for most of the 20th century. Now, I'll proclaim that today in the United States we have a Soviet system of government far more perfected than the Russians ever had. People might say, the Shah guy must be crazy. How could he say such a thing? And we're actually, we have more socialism in America and more government programs than ever existed in Russia. They, they would never had the bureaucracy to do what we're doing today, and the average American doesn't understand that. We financed the communists so we would have an enemy, so we would rally the people behind the government to protect us from the wicked communists, and yet we've introduced all of those programs right here in America, but with a vengeance. Go right ahead. Well, let me explain how our system of government today reflects a Sovietized system. 
we all think that City Hall is the government closest to us and the government most responsive to us. Well, that certainly is the framework of American government. But few people know that what goes on at your city and what goes on at your county is in all material respects controlled, directed, and demanded by an unelected board that the citizens largely don't even know exists. And that unelected board is called a COG, or a Council of Government. Now, virtually every square inch in America is covered by a COG organization. But what's a COG? Well, a COG is a federalized agency that handles the federal monies and disperses those federal monies to local government. Now, they like to say, well, COG membership is voluntary by your city or county. But everyone in your, your listening audience lives at a place where Local government rule is controlled by a cog. And basically that is because the local governments give up their sovereignty because they want to get those federal grants. They want to get the federal money. It's free money. And basically, of course, when they want that money, they have to do what the federal government wants them to, using our tax dollars to take away our freedom. Go right ahead. Well, to give an illustration of that, in fact, this is the best illustration available in America today, but this is the prototype that is going to come to every metropolitan area in the United States under the Agenda 21 um, uh, program. In the San Francisco Bay Area, a program called One Bay Area has been launched. In fact, next Thursday it is going to be finalized and the implementation is going to begin. Now, this program is the brainchild of an organization called ABAG, the Association of Bay Area governments. ABAG is a COG. This COG is a member of the CalCOG organization. CalCOG covers all the COGs in California, which cover every square inch in California. But ABAG is taking the giant leap forward that will be the master plan for every metropolitan uh, area in the United States. Now, ABAG comes into this with a promise the 101 cities who are members of, of ABAG with, with more than a quarter of a trillion dollars, a quarter of a trillion dollars in federal funds so that the San Francisco Bay Area can be remade. Now, what do I mean by remaking the San Francisco Bay Area? Well, what they are doing is they are converting the transportation system and the development program such that all new development for the next 25 years must be within a half a mile of what they call transit-oriented centers. They call these priority development areas. Now, in these very compact, very dense dynamics, they intend for most of the population to be relocated in these stack-and-pack housing units. And with these stack-and-pack housing units, there will be no capacity for automobiles. You will live in what they are calling a walkable community. In other words, you come down from your 14th floor and you walk to your job. And, or have a bicycle. They, they love bicycles. They want you walking. And they want to get you out of your car because your car gives you independence. And the last thing they want is independence. They want to be able to control everything you do and so they're going to have their rapid transit system that's what rapid transit is or public utilities public transportation but as far as your freedom of freedom is soon to be simply a remembrance of things past go ahead well that is true now what we've got to understand is that your city council your board of supervisors are blankly going along with this whether you're in the bay area or anywhere across the united states and that is because if you fight this system, your political career is over. Hold that thought, hold that thought. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's free money, and if you fight it, they'll come after you, and they'll make your life miserable. They'll crush you like a crumb. Michael, go right ahead. 
So as people begin to understand that the Agenda 21 protocol is not simply an international nonsense, the kind of thing that we saw out of the League of Nations and of the United, out of the United Nations for the last century. The Agenda 21 protocol, though it has an international origin, is a forced down the American people's throat by the federal government. And today, there is not a single governor anywhere in the United States who's alerting its citizens to the demands being placed on those states by the federal government. There is no elected leaders at the local level who are standing up with a microphone and telling the population that they're being schnookered by a foreign system of government that has been implemented in the United States. Now, these COGS go back to the 1950s. It was Dwight Eisenhower who invented them? You know, somebody forced that, that to, through Eisenhower's hands. Uh, I'm not saying that Eisenhower knew that it was going to grow into this. Uh, you know, he, 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 he implemented this um, thinking that it would um, be the vehicle for building the national freeway system. And that's why all of our freeways are federally owned. But the freeways were just a way to get in the door classic camel in a tent idea. Once the cause had control of local and state jurisdictions through the transportation system, they could then, over the decades, use it to expand their authority. And ironically, you know, these, like I say, the, the cause are voluntary associations. Well, California didn't determine to create any cogs in this state until Ronald Reagan was governor. And it was Reagan who, while governor, said the era of horse and buggy government in California is over. And by that he meant that the era of local government had come to an end and that we now were going to launch ourselves onto a system of regional government because that's what COGS do. The COG in the San Francisco Bay Area covers nine counties, seven and a half million people. It's all about regionalism. Okay? Regionalism doesn't really have a boundary. But regionalism affords the operation of the Sovietized government, where all decisions are made behind the scenes by unelected bureaucrats who then force it one way or another down the throats of the people. And you say, well, huh, our city needs to get out of the cog. Well, that's exactly right. But cities don't get out of the cog because they want their money. And the money is used to... You know, what's going to be used as we move forward to get you out of your car and to get you into a stack and pack. Now, who wants federal money when the money comes straight for devilish purposes? And that's why the American people have got to begin to elect folks, maybe yourself if you're out there in the listening audience, someone who stands up and says, no, we want local control, we want transparency, and we're not going to take these federal mandates for, for creating an outpost for the new world order here, here where it is that I live. And to date, no community's done that. We've got some politicians, some people, some ordinary citizens who've been elected to city councils and to boards of supervisors. I mean, I know... Hold, at least hold, that, thought, hold that thought, Michael. We'll be back in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and Michael's simply talking about how these COGS work, councils on government. And basically, they have one up in the San Francisco Bay Area. It covers over 100 communities. It's called the ABAG, Association of Bay Area Governments. And you want to get your share of the quarter of a trillion dollars. Then, of course, you go along with this. And if you don't go along with it, you won't get the federal money. And basically, if it's free money. But in the process, ladies and gentlemen, why you get give up your local sovereignty, and the politicians don't want to do that, and if they try to tell the people what's going on, they'll be suddenly lambasted by the controlled media, and they'll be attacked and vilified, and everything will be done to get them out of office. They do not want the public to understand this is a subversive element to change the very structure of our government, and of course, basically, the COGS were initially established by Dwight Eisenhower back when we were talking about the uh, early 1950s. 
1950s. He probably thought it had to do with the freeway system. But certainly the cogs here in California came in with Ronald Reagan, who always said the right thing. But look what he did as he centralized ever more power with both the state and the federal government. He talked against federal spending. He gave us the biggest federal deficits we had ever had. He criticized Jimmy Carter for creating a $200 billion deficit in four years in office. And Ronald Reagan, in the name of fighting communism and protecting America, gave us a $200 billion deficit every year for eight years. Every year. And we went from a $1 trillion deficit to a $2.7 trillion deficit while the great emancipator, while the great conservative political leader was in office. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, today, the um, San Francisco Bay Area is really representative of only what is to come everywhere. And that's not to say that these attacks aren't happening throughout the country. In Florida, there is a, in South Florida, there is a, a, a couple of cogs who put together seven counties and, and with a program for 50 years that isn't quite as drastic as the One Bay Area program that has all the smackings of the same principles. And those principles are that people must get off of the open space areas. Now, these open space areas are areas that are being declared. Right now, they're being declared by the state of California in this state. And there are massive amounts of area. I saw an interview conducted uh, by Heather, Heather Goss, who, who may have been on your show in the past. And Heather went up and interviewed a, an official at the um, um, Fish and Game Department, state of California, to talk about the maps that, uh, that uh, citizens have discovered uh, that evidence the plan for creating these wildland areas in California. And it's a remarkable interview because this lady has no idea of the implications of what she's doing, but she spoke very frankly and freely about the need to create these open space areas on lands that were once private property and how it is they're going to do that so that the animals can traverse the San Francisco Bay Area as they make their, their sojourn from the Sierra Nevadas to the Pacific Coast. And and in areas that are not metropolitan areas, they, these, these swaths, or they call them corridors, are huge. And now they're all being mapped out. And so citizens can go and actually see that the craziness that people like me have been talking about for 15 years has been reduced to a map, and that map is being implemented by the government agents, not just in California, but across the country. So it's time that we take this stuff seriously because it's going to move at a faster and faster clip because they've got their masses of organizations that are supporting this. Largely, they're NGOs. NGO means non-governmental organization. That includes all of your environmental organizations. It includes the American Chamber of Commerce and the American Farm Bureau and the, um, the National Real Estate Board, all of these are NGOs. Now, to get an NGO accreditation, you have to go to the United Nations. And the, and, and the price of getting an NGO designation is that you have to become an implementer of Agenda 21 policy. And these are subversive policies, ladies and gentlemen. This is a subversive plan. This is unconstitutional. But then the average person doesn't understand the Constitution. The average person honestly believes we're a democracy. The average individual believes, of course, that this is not that this not that the our leaders would never betray us. They would never try to take away our cars. They never try to take away our homes. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, the program is underway. And the fact that you're not hearing about this simply is a reflection of the degree of control that exists today over the mass media in America, which is tightly controlled, and the goal is to conceal the truth from the American people until it's far too late to change it. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, and it's, it's time that uh, the American people wake up because the evidence of what I'm talking about is very apparent and easy to, to gather on the web. You know, they, they, they are not doing this in the dark of night. They're just doing it quietly and increasingly quickly. Hold that but thought. It's all Hold the thought. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, we need to understand that the Agenda 21 program's objective 
is to create a governmental system based on the concept of regionalism. Regionalism erases existing political boundaries and allows for the establishment of these unelected councils to run our lives. The goal under Agenda 21 is to get everyone in dense cities where transportation to other cities is ultimately limited to trains and where people living in these dense cities largely do not own cars. It is a program that takes much of our farmland and converts it into open space, corridors for the animals. And people say, well, that's, that's crazy. That'll never happen. And I'm going to say to you, it is happening because those who are ruling America today, the guiding principles of American government today, say that human beings are but one species on this planet, and human beings have no right, ordinary human beings, have no right to think that they are any more special than any other species. And so the lands of America and the resources of America are being set aside for the animals. The resources, of course, end up in the hands of the global magnets to use as they choose. But the idea of making these resources available to free enterprise for the benefit of the, of the, of the, of the population is an idea that has vanished from this country. If you own um, land, you know, rich in, in, in uh, subterranean mineral deposits up in Montana, you're not allowed to touch those. If you own forests in California, you're not allowed to do anything with that forest. The point is that resources are being collectivized in this country and not for the benefit of supporting America's population. Remember, population is to drop by 85%. We are living on the verge of very tenuous times. Hold that thought. Hold the thought. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and certainly Michael is pointing out that we live in very, very tenuous times. There is a population control program that is being implemented throughout the world. Yes, America's population is growing, but not because we are reproducing, basically reproduction. And the white population is about 1.6 children per family. It takes 2.1 children per family to reproduce the population. We're increasing because we're bringing people in from all over the world, both legally and illegally. And basically, of course, that's the only reason America is, has more people than it used to have. But if you go into other areas, you go into Europe, certainly their population is dropping off. Certainly the reproduction rate in France is certainly about one, and Germany's 1.4 children per family. And in France and in Italy, it's 1.2 children per family, and they simply, Europe is dying off, as is Russia with 1.2 children per family, as is Japan with 1.2 children per family, and of course in Japan they do not allow immigration, or very little immigration, so 50 years from now there will be hardly anybody left there in Japan. This is not imaginary, it's real. It's part of a truly diabolical program. Basically the population will increase for the next 10, 15 years, up to about 9 billion people in the world, and then begin to drop and drop dramatically uh, until the majority of the people in the world are dead, probably within the next 75 to 100 years. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because people might be saying, oh my, I can't swallow this because, gee, if I swallowed it, you know, I, I won't be able to breathe. I mean, th this is too big a pill to swallow. And I want to say, no, it's not. It's too big a pill to ignore. What we have to do is take action. Now, we can't do much about what uh, Barack Obama uh, and Congress is, are up to. I mean, Washington, D.C. is lost to this cause, and it's going to be a good while before we bring Washington, D.C. back into the control of the American people. But there is something we can do at the local level. And, and that is to become aware of how your community is implementing Agenda 21 and take your politicians on. And one way to do that uh, is to um, issue to your politicians who are adopting these Agenda 21 
federal government directed programs for your community, whether it's the establishment of wildlands or the establishment of the stack and pack, uh, um, you know, new, new system for American living. And, um, you know, a good way to begin to do that is to put them on notice that you're serious. I mean, right now, politicians think they've got nothing to lose. If you're a politician and you go along with the Agenda 21 program, gee, you might just rise up in the Democrat Party. You might just rise up in the Republican Party. But if you make a fuss about Agenda 21 in your community, I guarantee that politician one thing, and that is that the parties will not support them. But the people will. And the idea here is is the politicians who think they've got a free ride in the political system to rise up by advancing Agenda 21 policies, there is a a technique and a mechanism you can use to help slow them down, at least make them look over their shoulder with the intention of making them not sleep comfortably at night. What's that technique? Well, the technique is called the misprision of treason. Now, every state has a statute regarding misprision of treason. In California, our, our statute relates back to 1850, when our state became, uh, when this area became a state. And a misprision of treason says that if an elected official is noticed a treasonous activity being undertaken under his watch, he's guilty of at least a misdemeanor. And this runs with him for his entire life. There's no statute of limitations on treason. And so while he may be comfortable today that he can get away with his Agenda 21 protocol, you know, when the public wakes up, and when the public turns around, say, 10 years from now, and says, how did we get to the mess we put ourselves through? And they pull out this dusty old misprision of treason. You've now got somebody that can be tried. And so what what I suggest is that listeners interested in this concept who have some awareness of Agenda 21 and who know what COGS are, who knows what the ICLE organization is. ICLE is the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. Now, ICLE um, is based in Bonn, Germany, and it has control, obvious control, of at least 650 cities and counties in America because this international NGO whose objective is the advance of Agenda 21, they actually wrote the the, the book called... Um, local Agenda 21. They work very closely with the United Nations, and they have contracts with your city. And they get inside your city, and they write the ordinances that implement Agenda 21. Now, our town and our county, Santa Cruz, are members of ICLEI. If your town is a member of ICLEI, you can issue a misprision of treason to your elected officials for their compliance to the, to the doctrines and policies of an international NGO, a foreign power, all in contravention of Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution, which prohibits any state or its subdivision from engaging with any foreign political power. And that's exactly what many, many cities across America are doing with this Hickley organization. I don't think it's so important that you begin talking about the subversive nature of this program. Let people understand that this is a foreign idea that they're bringing in, and basically the purpose is to destroy individual freedom and to destroy individual rights, and this is subversive and treasonous, and basically when we start talking like that, these people begin running for cover because they know what they're doing is wrong, and this is certainly a conspiracy. It is an organized, orchestrated, a secret effort, and the average individual doesn't know because the media is covering for it, but we need to start talking and using the term treachery, treason, and subversion. 
That's what it's all about. And quit talking about the danger of communism or, or the danger of terrorism or all these other things. These are simply phony dangers that are being created to take our attention off the real enemy, which is right here in our own country. And it is being fomented by our own politicians, some of them totally unknowing, but certainly some of them knowing exactly what they're doing because their loyalty is not to America, but to this internationalist dream. Go ahead. Well, you're exactly right with that comment, that many of the politicians who implement Agenda 21 don't know what the hell they're doing. They, they don't know what Agenda 21 is. They certainly aren't smart enough to make the connections to Agenda 21 policies and, and, and the destruction of the American system of government, the American system of life, and the American reverence for the individual because they've been product of the government school system, which has been, been, been waylaid uh, you know, for nearly 100 years now, it gets worse every decade. The children coming out of school today are, are, are openly acknowledging upon graduation that they are not Americans, but that they are global citizens. If your child is in public school, the purpose of public schools is to alienate your child from traditional ideas of America, from traditional uh, spiritual ideas, and from the family itself. You know, Stan, I've gone to so many places to give uh, uh, talks on this subject over the last uh, 15 years, and the number of times I've had uh, young grandmothers come up to me and break down because they say, I lost my child, and it was a function of the government school that caused that to happen. And today that pressure is far greater than it was in the 1980s or 1990s because the globalist focus of the educational system is just blatant. So mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, need to give a second thought before they ship their children off to the 40-hour totalitarian factory that is our government school system today. I mean, we all know that the government school system is not working in terms of traditional notions of, of education, but it is working precisely as designed. If you understand its purpose, is to create a global workforce for the post-Agenda 21 implemented world, a world of one government, one religion, and a whole lot fewer people. Your child is not benefiting from the schooling they're getting in government schools today. And so one step we can all take is to regain control over our children because I'll tell you, the awareness of the problems that America faces is least recognized by the younger people in our society. And I would simply add, if you are a Christian uh, and you concerned about your children's soul, you'll get them out of the government schools because the purpose of the government schools is to destroy their belief in God and family and the country, and they're doing a great job of it. Go right ahead. Well, exactly right. From that perspective, the school system is working. I want to talk for a moment back to the One Bay Area program and this, this, this concept of taking nine counties around the Bay and merging them into a single governmental unit. There's a, there's a very interesting talk. You know, we've got it cut down to 15 minutes uh, by a man named Paul Sappho, self-described futurist, who spoke at the Joint Venture Silicon Valley, an NGO, a very problematic organization, uh, here this year in, uh, you know, on the peninsula, the San Francisco Peninsula. He had an audience of 1,200 executives from Silicon Valley in his, in his attendance. And in this speech, you know, it's, it's the top video at freedomadvocates.org for people who want to see it. But in this video, he says the Bay Area is already the first American city-state. Now, that's um, spelled C-I-T-I, one word, state, city-state. What's a city-state? Well, he kind of describes that in this little uh, a short presentation, and uh, he says that city-states are the new form of international government that all report together and have an international congress 
and it's the San Francisco Bay Area, he claimed, already does not take its directives from Sacramento, our state capital. It doesn't take directives from Washington, D.C. Instead, it coordinates with other city-states around the world. Now, he wasn't booed. He got polite applause. The fact is that he's right. He then goes on to say that soon Los Angeles will become California's second city-state. And the third city-state in the making is the city-state of San Diego, Tijuana. You see, once you begin to regionalize, all borders fall down. In fact, that's why we don't get border control in this country, because, you see, America is merely a region in the newly emerging one-world dynamic. And I think it's so important what Michael is saying. Our leaders, the ones who, who are really in charge, don't believe in America. They don't believe in nationalism. They don't believe in the Constitution, which they've sworn to uphold. They believe that the in regions, and the region that would be North America would include joining together Mexico, the United States, and Canada into one political unit. Until you understand that is the real agenda, they hear, oh my goodness, we'll just give us this uh, immigration bill, and then we'll guard the border. Ladies and gentlemen, they said that in 1986. They lied then, they're lying now, because these people have certainly no loyalty to America. This is a subversive movement, and where is the outcry? from our politicians, they're afraid either to say anything or they're part and parcel of it. Go right ahead, Michael. Well, let me talk about something else that's happening to, to fight back. Freedom Advocates, in combination with the uh, Post-Sustainability Institute run by Rosa Corey up in Santa Rosa, California, have combined to um, um, create a fundraising effort. You know, Freedom Advocates has never been out there uh, asking for or looking for uh, money. We, we, we do get contributions. We really appreciate that. But now, for the first time in, you know, 12 or 14 years, we're saying we need some money because we've hired counsel out of Sacramento, uh, a man named Tim Kasuni, and uh, we, we are prepared to file suit against the um, ABAG organization and the One Bay Area Plan, and in principle, we will bring an action to negate the effort to regionalize the state. Now, no such action has ever been brought in the history of the, of, of the Union in the past, but I will point out that Article 4, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution says the federal government must guarantee a Republican form of government, Republican as defined as American, in every state. Instead, what the federal government is doing through these COG programs is bringing us a Soviet system of government. And we're bringing a lawsuit against the One Bay Area Program uh, for violating Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, as well as for many other uh, state and federal laws that are um, breached by way of this quarter of a trillion dollar commitment to the remake of the San Francisco Bay Area. And I implore your listeners who are able to make a contribution to do so, because if we don't defeat this in the Bay Area, it will be in your, in your neighborhood. If we defeat it in the Bay Area, then for the first time in the battle against Agenda 21, the citizens can stand on a pedestal and say, we're making progress. Michael, how can people get in touch with you, get in, uh, learn more about your organization? Well, it's freedomadvocates.org. Go to the website. The uh, top article uh, is A Time to Sue, Regionalism Challenge, the first ever legal challenge to stop Agenda 21 in the nine-county regional plan uh, of, of ABAG called One Bay Area. And uh, I think all Americans have a vested interest in the outcome of what happens here as they <laughs> When I was a teenager and spent a, a, a summer in Iowa working on, on a farm there, you know, I remember one Sunday the farmer sat down and, and I was with them, and, and they told me then, and I never forgot it. They said, you know, everything that comes to Iowa 
came to California first. And that's true. And that's what the globalists know. And so what they can establish here will roll out across the rest of the country. And I must say, the San Francisco Bay Area has always been a target for this kind of uh, dynamic. I remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a subversive movement, a subversive movement. Once again, the telephone number where people can get in touch with you. Our phone number is 831-684-2232. One more time. 831-684-2232. That's freedomadvocates.org. We'll be back in a moment to wrap up tonight's program here at Radio Liberty. Michael, you've got three minutes to wrap up the program. Well, let me just let the listeners understand that in the San Francisco Bay Area, awareness is beginning to seep out. And for the last year, ABAG has held these little uh, seances for the um, rollout of the One Bay Area program. And the good guys, that means real Americans, have shown up at these meetings. Nobody before had ever heard of ABAG, didn't know what a COG was, but now these, these meetings are stuffed with people, 99% in opposition. Notwithstanding that, next Thursday, ABAG has made it very clear the plan will be accepted, the cities will be mandated, and the development of uh, Stack and Pack, uh, Carlos um, uh, systems will be implemented. As a consequence, and over time, the suburban neighborhoods will be abandoned, they will not get city services. Rural areas will be totally taken over to implement the wildlands program. That's all part of the One Bay Area program. And that the citizens are warming up. They're beginning to get the picture. It doesn't make a bit of difference when you're dealing with these unelected Soviet bureaucrats who have all the money and all the power. But the battle lines are at least beginning to form, and uh, that's why we're hoping that uh, we can get uh, what we need to manage this lawsuit and uh, try to um, put um, um, you know, hang these folks up so that they can't just rough rod over the American people in our way of life. And uh, we need help. We need help from every place we can get it. And uh, we, we need awareness to continue to grow. It certainly is growing. And uh, to the extent that you and the listening audience can help us either financially or in awareness, you know, well, your children thank you. We are involved in an epic struggle for the survival of freedom, and basically most people don't even know the battle is going on. They don't understand the subversive element that permeates every aspect of our society because they're focusing our attention on the threat of terrorism, and yet we're financing terrorism throughout the world. Why would we be financing terrorism if terrorism is a problem and a threat to America? Well, then, of course, we've got the threat of communism. Oh, communism is a terrible threat. Well, create all of these threats, ladies and gentlemen, to focus our attention on, on the external threat. The, ex the threat is not external. The threat is from within. And where is the money coming for, to finance communism? You need to get the book Foundations, their power and influence, which we've kept in print uh, for well over 20 years. Michael, God bless you for everything you do, and please keep in touch and keep us advised what's going on. We'll, we'll do that, Dr. Stan. Bye-bye. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and certainly Michael does an excellent job, and we certainly know Michael. He's a personal friend. He does a wonderful job, and we commend him to you, and if you're in a position to help him, get in touch with him, freedomadvocates.org, freedomadvocates.org. It's a very, very important organization, and we commend him to you. Well, this is the time when I have to mention that my ministry, Radio Liberty, is primarily listener-supported, and if you're in a position to help us, we'd love to hear from you. Our number is one 1 800 5448927. 1 And then, of course, we do hope if you'd like to join the Radio Liberty family of supporters, get our four best tapes of the month. If you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter, if you'd like to get the books and videos and four CD sets and, and, and the DVD sets that we offer, why give us a call? Let me tell you about some of the things that we have that are so vitally important. You need to get my talk on Agenda 21, the Covert Plan. Agenda 21, the Covert Plan, will take you into the subversive movement that's going on throughout the country today. 
We have another talk on population control, the secret agenda, and they've already killed billions of people. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they've killed billions of people, and they know exactly what they're doing. They create wars where hundreds of millions of people die, and the average individual has very little understanding what's really going on. And yet, of course, the coming wars are going to be far more bloody than the last ones. We're dealing with people who have no concept of right and wrong, they have a goal, they have an objective, because they worship a different God. And if you haven't read my book, Brotherhood of Darkness, you need to get it. That's Brotherhood of Darkness. I don't want to give you too many things to get. Get my book, Brotherhood of Darkness, and or the DVD, or, and or the DVD, the book, and the, and the CD that's called the Brotherhood of Darkness Special. So that you need to get my talk on Agenda 21, The Covert plan. There really is a covert plan that basically it involves population control. It involves mass genocide. Not imaginary. It's very real. It's being implemented. It's been implemented. And then you need to get my talk on population control, the secret agenda. And all of these things are available by calling 1-800-544-8927. Now, you can get my pamphlet on the population control agenda. You can get it on the Internet. Certainly you can get it at my website, which is RadioLiberty.com. That's RadioLiberty.com. Or certainly if you get any of the other items, you'd like to get a free copy of my population control agenda. It's really very, very good. I think it's well worthwhile. It's really certainly, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of copies of this pamphlet out across America. And we hope you'll get them and you'll help to circulate it. And you have our permission to copy it. You need to understand that there really are people who want to destroy humanity, want to destroy most of the people on the earth. And they've already killed several billion people. But of course, you're never going to hear this discussed to the regular media. They go to your website and go Google in Population Control Agenda, Stan Monteith, Population Control Agenda, Radio Liberty, or just Population Control Agenda. Or if you'd like to get a free copy of it, certainly through us. If you get anything from us, just ask for a copy. We'll be glad to get it to you. But you need to understand that they've not only targeted you, but your children and your family. And then, of course, we do hope, of course, you'll go to our website at RadioLiberty.com where you can listen to our news, to, to our uh, regular broadcasts, uh, uh, daily broadcasts, four hours a day, live. Or you can get the archive programs. And then, of course, you can watch our DVDs. And then you can read our newsletters. You can read the Population Control Agenda. You'll get information there that's vitally important to understand what is going on. And certainly we try to bring you outstanding guests from all across America that will help you understand the events that are taking place. You are going to have to be involved, and you are going to have to get others listening and understanding. There's an organized effort to confuse the American people and conceal the truth. Your job is to learn how to get the truth out and get our message out. Our number is 1-800-544-8927. 1-800-544-8927. Please pray for Radio Liberty. <laughs> 